welcome to episode 18 of Missile Industries Ford Falcon 351 Krusty Wagon Project. Now, at the end of the last episode, I pointed out that I had been somewhat foolishly welding around my petrol tank after everything was said and done, because I'd left it underneath the front of the car while I welded this guard up. Anyway, so today I've decided I should probably put that fuel tank back in the car and put some fuel in it. So I've gone ahead and filled the car up, I've reinstalled the tank, plumbed everything back up, so now it's time to see if I can get the car to start up without having a jerry can hanging out of the side of the engine bay. So here we go. There is the brand new fuel filter, plumbed in and ready to go. Might take a fair amount of cranking to get this thing to start, but we'll see how much effort that takes. Tank freshly installed, all rubber hoses reconnected. That's why the Vaseline's there. fuel leak. So there you go, it runs, it picks up fuel from the tank, it's made it all the way to the fuel filter already, the fuel looks nice and clean, so win. Much win except for that fuel leak I still haven't fixed yet. I'll get to it, honestly I will. Maybe just one more start to see if that miss is clearing up. Steering lock, there we go. Sounds great. Anyway, back to the original intent of this episode, which is to pull this guard off and do some welding around that uh, torque box and seal, because it's probably the most affected part of the car as far as rust is concerned. And it's probably going to be a fairly complex and uh, tricky repair to make. But fortunately, it's hidden by this guard, so I'm pretty much just going to cut everything out and then weld plate over the holes and then uh, seal it and then put the guard back on over the top of it and pretend it never happened. As I detailed earlier in my rust assessment video, the tops of these torque boxes, plenum chamber areas, are in great shape as is the uh, driver's side sill area. But this area here, compared to the rest of the car, it's a real mess. And I suspect the reason for that is because it's taken a hit 
some time in its life. There's evidence over here of it having a massive hit. And that's compromised all of the uh, paint and as a consequence of that it has rusted out in traditional Ford Falcon style. And that's a pretty decent hole. I mean, it's not too bad back here. What I'm going to do is just cut all of that out. Let me take a hammer to that and see if I can straighten it out once I've cut all the uh, rust out of the back of it. I'll cut that out as well. And we'll see how much metal there is in here to weld up to. So, look what plopped out from underneath my car while I was hammering away at it. It's a big old chunk of dirt. Think of the weight savings. In other news, I have cut the rust out. And you know what they say, what starts off as a small job morphs into an even bigger job. But so far so good. That came out with a bit of chiseling and a bit of encouragement. But what it has revealed is that the floor pan is going to need some attention too. So that's annoying, but that's not going to be today's problem. I might pull this door off too so I can make it the uh, subject of the next repair video because it's kind of in the way and I'd like to get inside. So I think this door is going to come off maybe even this episode just so I can get some better access to the floor pan and the footwell there. This years ago, remember? You don't remember, do you? <laughs> now that I have the door off, it's super easy to get access to the inside of the footwell to clean away all the uh, rust and dirt and see how much rust issues I'm going to have to deal with in here. And it looks to me like pretty much all that section there. Right up to the uh, seal panel will have to come out. I'll cut all that out and I will weld in a new piece. Now, I don't have any sheet metal that's 1.5mm thick, so I might be forced to go to Bunnings. Get myself some sheet metal to uh, work with. Hopefully I can avoid cutting into all these creases. All these, uh, maybe not there, so I'll probably have to uh, improvise. But as is the case with cars with vinyl flooring and air conditioning, water has gotten in and it's rusted the floor out right there under the air conditioning unit. So that's annoying. But it's not as bad as I thought it was because all of this is still good. All the way up to here, it's still good. It's just this bit, this bit right here, gone. So my trip to Bunnings was a fail, no mild steel sheet in any size, any thickness, so this washing machine lid down here will just have to do the trick. And there's my patch section, just need to cut it out of this lid, fold it into shape and put it in here. Should probably do one for the underside too. So I've trimmed up my piece of uh, washing machine lid, and I've cleaned up the hole it has to go into. I've drilled a series of holes in this piece of sheet so that I can plug weld it onto the original floor pan, top box floor pan fans there. Hopefully this all works out. I'm going to weld it in place along the front edge, and then I'm going to hammer this down until the metal is flush with the panel underneath it and then I will plug weld those bits into there and then finish welding the rest of it around there and it should be uh, all good. I've attempted to hammer this piece of metal in here complete with the warning sticker on the lid and I'm just not going to be able to get the contour under here to meet up so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to grind all these tacks off, 
And then I'm going to make a separate piece up that joins the bottom of the sill up to this, weld it on separately and then try to reattach this onto that piece because right now it's falling short and it's not a very satisfactory solution. So that's where we are with that. Another one's still sitting there doing nothing. But let's get into it and see how we can sort this all out. So my plan here is to cut this piece to suit and weld that into that uh, sill and then that will form the basis for the other patch which will go over the top of it. I'll either plug weld it or butt weld it, I haven't decided yet. Just going to uh, see how this plays out. I'm going to recycle this piece off my patina guard and um, see if I can get it to work. So there's my piece of shaped up steel to go into this lower sill section. I'm looking pretty promising for this piece. I'm going to tack weld it in on the inside and then I'm going to shape it or hammer it into shape like that and then give it a few tacks on the outside and um, build it from there. Here's where we're at now. That's tacked back into the sill. It's been contoured and tacked in there. So now I'm going to stick this piece in across there, tack it all in, hammer it flat, and hopefully that will do. I'm literally just using the scrap off cuts from that patina guard that I trimmed up last weekend. So probably a better solution than the piece of uh, washing machine lid I had shaped up. After a bit of welding and hammering, that is the end result. Fortunately, there's going to be a guard covering this, so that's about as carried away as I plan to get. So I've welded this lower section in, and I deem that to be satisfactory. But unfortunately, my gas bottle is starting to run out. So I could start this bit here, welding it in, but I need to do the floor so what I should do is wrap this up and pick it up next week. Summary time for episode 18 of Miscellaneous Trees Crusty 351 XC Wagon Project and I've done about as much welding today as I'm going to get away with doing before I run out of gas. These uh, class D gas bottles don't really last very long. I think I'm going to have to get myself one of those big gas bottles but that's a problem for another time. But for the time being, I'm wrapping this up, the fuel tank's back in the car, the car runs, I've fixed up the sill, I'm still in the process of welding that torque box in. I think next episode, instead of attacking the door, I'm going to be attacking the floor pan of this car, because there's a big cutout I need to do to weld the rest of this uh, washing machine lid into, and that will be when I finally weld that piece in. So I'll get another gas bottle throughout the week and I'll come at this again next weekend. And one final note before I go, I got rid of all that uh, stale fuel yesterday at the uh, local, I guess you call it, refuse transfer centre because they had a hazardous waste collection day yesterday. And they only do one of those a year. So I rocked up with my two cans worth of fuel and gave them to the council and made it their problem. I guess you could say this is the consequence of a car having air conditioning and also being 47 years old. A little bit of rust creeping in.